Welcome back to the Everyday Diesel YouTube channel. Uh, another day, another weekend probably. I'm starting this job pretty late in the day. Working on my Mega Cab, my 2014 67 2500. If you're following along in videos, um, just recently did the DNJ billet valve cover. Very easy install and one of the one of my favorite things to do to a, a Cummins truck is just get rid of the ugly vet stock valve cover. There's a bunch of really nice options out there. So anyways, I'm gonna start tearing apart all of this stuff. Um, grid heater delete plate, uh, intake manifold. Pretty straightforward process. The only thing that's kind of, uh, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal is you have to take off the rail and uh, all the injection lines in order to get the uh, intake uh, grid plate off. For right now though, I'm gonna start uh, Actually, first, let's show let's show these new parts. Okay, so here's what I went with. Uh, in my opinion, Glacier Diesel. They make some of the nicest uh, grid heater plates, and in my opinion, the nicest factory style uh, intake horn. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them out there. There's you know eBay specials you can get for pretty cheap. These look the best in my opinion, and uh, obviously powder coated Illusion Cherry leaving this one just raw aluminum so these things are pretty nice they come with a uh, cast in relief um, for the number one injection line now actually i will say i think the banks manifold is a little bit more well well uh, engineered simply because they supply you with a number one injection line so that you do not have to sacrifice that not that big of a deal we are talking about a tuned truck okay you do not buy one of these for horsepower. I mean, unless you have some 800, 900,000 horsepower build going on, uh, stock intake manifolds on five nines and six sevens, I believe, I know on five nines have proven to be plenty enough for a decent amount of horsepower. This is a looks thing, 100%. I wanna get rid of that factory intake manifold. I wanna get rid of that block off plate. I want to add some color, the whole theme that I have going on under the hood of the truck. So real quick, because uh, I'm eating up too much time here. Grid here plate, we'll go over that a little bit more later. These come in the kit, uh, standoffs um, for the um, rail. Now this is one key component that these are hard to find. And I want to talk about this for a moment. This is just a uh, stud, male, female. Um, this will end up going into the middle bolt hole this is for your dipstick only if you are running an aftermarket valve cover if you are running a factory valve cover your intake manifold from gdp will come with one of these this bolts on to two bolts on the crankcase uh, vent filter on top of the valve cover and then this bolt hole holds your dipstick when you get rid of that valve cover and go to an aftermarket valve cover, you no longer have those bolts. So you need a, you know, a way to fasten your dipstick so it's not bouncing around all over the place. You need one of these. I got this from uh, Garfalo. I'll put a link to his website. I don't know if this is on the website. I had to message him and ask for this. And I think I at that I got lucky and I got one of the only ones that he had. Uh, but they are out there. You can get them if you are doing an aftermarket valve cover with a GDP or any other aftermarket uh, intake manifold. I'm pretty sure you will need one of these for your dipstick. I figured this was a good point to stop and do a little recording. Disassembly is completely finished. 
Um, and I've also done the majority of the cleaning that I'm gonna do. Um, everything has been taken off, as you can see. I was able to leave the number six injection line. Um, it had enough play in it that I could uh, get the rail out from under it. So that worked out good because the uh, line to crossover tube nut way back there is not easy to get to. So I did some scotch brighting on the uh, gasket surface, did a lot of vacuuming. Um, gonna do a little bit more vacuuming. Go over this mounting surface with some uh, with a towel and some brake clean. Got stuff pretty much everywhere. So here is the rail. Got everything plugged and the five injection lines. So here's one of the biggest reasons why people, actually here are the two reasons why people do these. Um, I'm not really doing it honestly for either reason because there was nothing really wrong with mine. I, my truck got uh, taken care of EGR wise early in its life or earlier in its life. Um, so it wasn't too bad, but these grid heaters, you will see online, people will complain about this a whole bunch. That nut right there, will essentially rot off and it's been known to do that um it's a fact there's a lot of people people that argue it but i mean i've seen it i've seen it multiple times but it will rot off and fall into your engine and ruin a piston um so that's one reason the second reason obviously is look at the difference in just airflow there's the grid heater and uh they don't really give a whole lot of room i mean very minimal room here for airflow and how it really should be or could be this is opened up to the maximum you know much larger opening um same thing it you know it translates into the intake horn so here's the intake horn and you can see and this is really crusty you can see what egr even at 80 or 90 thousand miles what it'll do but that opening is extremely small then of course here is the uh new intake manifold which pretty much matches the uh, grid plate here okay with all that being said i have that sensor to move over to here and then i will i also have to get map sensor and move it over to the uh new uh, manifold and start assembling Officially done. A pretty simple job. Took about three, three and a half hours total, start to finish. GDP intake manifold, GDP uh, grid heater delete. No more grid heater. Shouldn't be a problem. I removed all the wiring. There's no codes on my dash. I wanted to add a little bit more information in this video that I think I might have left out in my not rush to get done. When I did this job, I got it all done in about three hours and it got dark and I didn't film as much as I think I should have. So a couple of things I want to mention is, let me preface this by saying this is for 13 to 18 trucks. I don't know um, off the top of my head the similarities for the third gens, <clears throat> the early fourth gens, or the fifth gens. All I know is what I know, and so that's what I'm trying to show here. But if you're doing the grid heater delete and you're doing a uh, grid plate like I did here with this GDP, you do not need to remove all six injection lines okay you can leave number six in place once you get one through five off and you get your feed and return off um, and everything else is done and cleared and out of the way and the harness is out of the way 
you can, there is enough play to lift up on the number six injector line and pull the rail out of the truck. It is not easy to get back to that number six injection line nut. That being said, going back in is actually even easier. You look here, right here, and right here, you'll see little like three quarter inch spacers, aluminum spacers. Those are the standoffs for your rail. What you can do is you can shove the rail up underneath of the number six injector that is still installed. And then you can lift up on the rail and slide in those spacers and then after you slide the spacers in up underneath the rail, you can of course start your bolts. Um, I don't know if that's making much sense how I'm explaining it, but it's, it's the easiest way that I found to do it. From there, everything just bolts back together. Pretty simple job, slowly but surely getting this truck to where I want it to be. Thank you for watching this video. I know these are just some, you know, some how-to or some uh, just, you know, boring old installation videos. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button. Subscribe.